a God that, my God, hears the cry of your people, dear Father. And, Lord God, we're praying this morning in Jesus' name that you would, my God, uh, bless us to Tanya's request on tomorrow, Lord God. My God, we pray that you would bless, Lord God, in her favor, Lord God, because we know that the king's heart is in the Lord's hand, Lord yeah. God. It's like the rivers of water, Lord. You can turn it whichever way that you want. We're praying that you turn it in her favor, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, that you would, my God, uh, those that are uh, going through in their bodies, Lord God, you heard the request this morning, Lord God, for family members, Lord God, that are suffering in their body, Lord. Lord God, we know you to be a healer, Lord God. We, Lord God, we know you, Lord God, to be a God that, that loves and cares, Lord God. And we're praying this morning, Lord God, that you would uh, bless those requests, the Father, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. We're praying, Lord God, that you would bless those that are traveling, Lord God, those that will yeah. be traveling, those that Amen. Thank the Lord. Uh, Saints, uh, this morning, while well, we're going to sing a part of a song while we take offering. I'm sorry, Saint, I forgot to pray for the offering. We can pray yeah, for you can pray for the offering now. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the opportunity of prayer once again, Lord. We're praying, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you would bless the offering. Let it be used for the building and the furtherance of your kingdom, dear Father. We pray that you would bless the hearts of those that have to give, bless the hearts of those that don't have and yet desire to give, and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Turn your hymn notes right quick to uh, page number 218. I'm, I'm going on. Until the crown is won. I mean to fight the fight of faith till life on earth is done. I'll never know, turn back. Me victory, if onward I will go, I'm going on, going on, until the final triumph. I'm going, let's speed it up a little bit. I'm going on, I'm going on, unto the final triumph. I'm going on. Verse number two. The opposition comes, should, should persecution fire be lit as in the ancient day with Jesus. Defeat. Uh, the battle hot. I mean to win the goal. Amen. I'm going on, going on, unto the final triumph. I'm going on, I'm going on, going on. Unto the final triumph, I'm going on. Verse number three. Going on, I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on, I'm going on, I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on. 
Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. Thanks, God. Thank God for you being here. Thank God for the uh, privilege and opportunity to be before you. Uh, thank God for salvation and sanctification. Um, I'm, you know, here today, obviously, to give God his uh, due praise. Um, we're standing in the gap, uh, Pastor Hodges, as you know, and some of the saints are out of town. So we just want to uh, share something with you that we feel God has put on our heart, and hopefully it's a blessing to you. Um, so I, I want to start this off by saying this is kind of a special day for me, and not just so much because I'm up here and I'm not normally up here, but today, November 19th, 2010, I gave my life to God. God reclaimed a backslider, a, a, a low life, a weed head, a, a failed rapper, whatever you want to call me. A, 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 I was all that and more, somebody that was just lost and messed up, but more than anything, I recognized that I needed God. So uh, thank God, here I am uh, 13 years later. This is my spiritual birthday, so I'm, I'm grateful to be doing this. So I won't delay, I'm gonna set my timer because pastor likes timeliness. And uh, I'm going to take a page from Brother Nick. We're going to stay on course. <laughs> All right. Saints, uh, we have had some new converts and different ones get saved recently. And, and for even for some of you that have been saved for a while, salvation is beautiful. We get excited. We run the aisles. We be up and down. We raise our holy hands. We sing it. We be crying and sling, uh, slinging snot, as they say sometimes. We be doing all the above. We be happy. But you know what? There's going to come a time when the devil tries you. He's going to come a time when he come at you. It ain't always going to be sunshine and rainbows. It ain't always going to be you rejoicing and leaping and shouting and running, running like Brother Roy around the church. You ain't always going to have those moments. You're going to have some moments where the devil tries to give you a haymaker. You know what a haymaker is, right? You're going to have some times where the devil tries to gut punch you. He wants to knock you out and lay you down. Lay you down. So the title of my message as we go forward, I want you to keep this in mind. The title of my message is, Can You Take a Punch? Can you take a punch? And God brought this to me. Um, I, this has been a, I told the saints a while ago, this has been a rough year. And you know what, at going through, in the midst of what I was going through, you know, I, I felt depressed sometimes. I felt down sometimes. I felt overwhelmed sometimes. But nonetheless, my mind was still on, I want to stay saved, God. I appreciate what you've done in my life. I want to keep this. I want to keep my salvation. I want to keep uh, the integrity that the brother talked about. I want to maintain all of that. But in doing that, you're going to go through some tough times. You cannot go through life without going through tough times, period, period. That's anybody. But definitely being saved because you get saved don't mean you won't go through tough times. So when the devil comes at you and he tries to give you one, the thing is, can you take it? Can you take it and still stand? Can you take it and still get over the hump? Can you take it and still get through? Can you take it and still say, Lord God, I still love you. I still appreciate you. I'm still going to stand with you. Lord, as, as Job would say, though you slay me, yet I'll trust you. Can you still say that even when you're hurting? Okay? So let's talk about this. A little trivia. What do, this is easy. Y'all know this. What does Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Mike Tyson have in common? They're boxers. They're boxers. And what is a boxer? It's a fighter. A fighter. A boxer is a person who fights as a sport, usually with gloved fists. Sometimes they don't have no gloves. They be street fighting. They take them gloves off. Um, but there's usually some sort of set rules that's involved in them fighting. Well, with the devil, there are no rules. The devil, the devil don't play fair. He fight dirty. He pulling dirt up out the ground. He doing throwing it in your eye. He going to do a uh, uh, lower, uh, lower cut, whatever he can do, low blows. He going to do whatever he can do because his objective is to take you out. His objective is to make you fold. His objective is to make you just give up and say, I can't do this no more. I am done. I am done with this church stuff. I'm done with the, the modesty. I'm done with the I can't get out there and dance. I'm done with the drinking and hanging out. I, I'm done. I just want to go back to what I was doing. But this is where you have to stand tall. Okay, so this is what a boxer goes through. A boxer squares off against somebody in the ring, okay? And believe it or not, saints, we are all boxers. We're boxers. We're spiritual fighters. Now, you may not be out in the streets duking it out with somebody. I hope it don't come to that to none of y'all, but we are spiritual boxers. Every day we wake up, we're stepping in that ring, ready to go. Ding, ding, the bell done rang. You, it's time to go because the devil going to come with something. He's going to come with something that may meet you at your door, may meet you on the expressway going to work, may meet you at your job, may meet you on the phone. He's going to come with something throughout the day, may meet you at somewhere. It's going to be something, meet you at your house. It's going to be something somewhere where he's going to come, but you got to be ready. You got I'm ready to go. Ding, ding, I hear that bell. I'm up. I'm up. I'm ready to go. We fighting. It's fight time. Let's go. It's go time. Okay? 
So you may say, well, Brother Sean, why are you saying that? Why do you call us spiritual fighters? Because the devil is trying to take you out. We are engaged in spiritual warfare. This is not a game. He's not playing with you. He's not going to take it easy on you. He's not going to say, oh, that's Sister Cindy. She quiet. She nice. I ain't going to hit her in the face. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He ain't going to look at Sister Sylvia and say, oh, she got a nice family and a good husband. I'm not going to give her a low blow. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He's not going to look at Brother Elston and say, well, you know what? I ain't going to hit that brother. He just got saved. When the ref ain't looking, he's going to try to give you one because that is his job to take you out, okay? This is also why people backslide. People backslide because they get tired of fighting. I get tired of going against the devil. I get tired of waking up trying to guard my mind. I get tired of waking up and, and I can't be free and do what I want to do. I get tired of, of being disciplined. I get tired of, now I, I just want to let loose sometimes. I want to curse. I want to act up. I want to I wanna sleep around. I want to do all these things. I get tired of having constraints and rules and, and convictions to live by. They get tired. I get tired of fighting the devil. I get tired of the devil hitting me. I get tired of them low blows. I get tired of just taking it. The people on my job curse me out and treat me any old kind of way, and I'm just supposed to take it? I get tired of that. I get tired of that. But you know what? That's the devil's job. He's a boxer. He's trying to wear you down. You got to dip, stick, move, because he's going to stay on you, and he's, gonna, he's not going to let up. He's, even when the bell rings sometimes and he's supposed to stop, he's not. He's going to try to throw something in real quick so the ref don't see it. He's dirty, and he fights dirty, and he's not going to play fair with you, okay? So you may say, well, Brother Sean, I don't know if I really believe you. Okay, let's look at this. First Peter, you don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to put it up, brother, but it, I'm just going to read it. You don't necessarily have to go there, you all. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be so be vigilant, because you're who? Adversary, your opponent, the person in the ring with you, this person that's trying you, your adversary, the devil. He, he, he names them. Your adversary, the devil, okay, as a roaring lion, he walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for a challenger. He's looking for somebody to fight. He's looking for somebody to get in the ring with him. That's what he's doing. He's on the prowl looking for your soul. He's looking to take your life. He's not playing fair. He's not playing game. He got blood dripping from his teeth. He's waiting to get his next victim. He's waiting to take out the next person. You go to another scripture, uh, if you have time, you don't have to go there, but just if you consider it, John 10, 10, it says, the thief, we know that the devil is a thief. When the boxer's in the ring with you, he's trying to take something from you, okay? He's trying to take a victory from you. He's trying to take your life from you. In some situations, the devil's trying to take your life in some situations, but he's trying to take something from you. He wants your victory. He wants your respect. He wants your reputation. He's trying to take all of that from you, okay? So when you get in that ring and you wake up every day, this ain't like practice. This is not a game. You're not playing. He's here to take you out, okay? So the scripture, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That don't sound like my friend. But Roy, that don't sound like my friend. He coming to steal, kill, and destroy me? Oh, come on now. Come on now. But Jesus says, I am come that they may have life and they might have it more abundantly. So God is coming to give us something while the devil's coming to take something away from us. He want to leave us with a black eye, busted lip, all of that stuff. But God want to give us something. He want to give us life. He want to lift us up. He want to make us more than what we've been. You know, the script, well, I'll get to that later. I want to get ahead of myself. Two things, two main things that boxers have in common. They have to be able to throw a punch. And that's easy. That's easy. Come on, you, you beat me there. But the harder part is you got to be able to take a punch. Okay, hence the title of this message, Can You Take a Punch? Because being saved ain't always about God blessing, leaping and shouting, and testimonies, and, and this is, yeah, bro. No, sometimes you're going to get some gut checks. Sometimes you're going to get hurt. Sometimes it's not going to be a game. Um, shadow boxing is something that, that boxers do, okay? They, they're practicing, you know. It ain't nobody in front of them, but they're just punching. They're practicing. Okay, and the scripture talks about that. First Corinthians 9, 26 says, I therefore so run. Paul was talking about this. I'm not just out here training and practicing for nothing. We're not just sitting here reading the Bible for nothing. We're not sitting here fasting for nothing. We're doing this for a reason. He says, um, he says I therefore so run, not as uncertainty. I'm not doing this just to be doing it. He says, so fight I, okay? He says, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. I'm not just shadow boxing. We ain't just practicing and playing games. The devil is trying to take your life, Sister Savannah. He ain't playing with you. 
This is not a joke. This is not a practice. This is not a drill. He's trying to take your life. He wants you to fold and break under any circumstances possible, okay? Uh, you, uh, Mike Tyson uh, had this quote. An interviewer, uh, a reporter was talking to him and giving an interview, and he was asking him when he had this fight coming up with Evander Holyfield, he said, are you worried about what's going to happen in the ring and what his plan may be? Mike Tyson's quote, replying back to the reporter was, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. We all be good when we first get saved. We all happy. Everybody's good until that first real test come. That first real test come that's coming to knock you out, Sister Nicole. That first real test to make you bag up and say, you know what? I made a bad decision. I, I ain't, this salvation stuff ain't for me. I, I chose wrong. I, th I thought this was it, Sister Savannah. I thought this was it, uh, Brother Kermit. I thought this was the thing to do, but now you know what? This ain't for me. I, I chose wrong. I got into the wrong thing. Okay, everybody has a plan. He said, until they get hit in the mouth, all that changes. So that's where it has to be something deeper in you when that happens, okay? We all have faith in God until we're faith with a really serious test, sis. A really serious test. Now, we ain't talking about something light, oh, you know, Lord, you know, my car is running out of gas. I need to hurry up and get to the gas station. That's cool. But we talking about when your car done got stolen. We talking about when that car gets repossessed and you need to get to work and you don't know what you're going to do. You don't have the money. You don't know where this is going to come from. Okay? So you may say, well, Brother Sean, what's the purpose of the punch? The punch has two purposes. It's to knock you out or to make you quit. And that's, we touched on that already before, talking about people backsliding. When you get, sometimes it ain't always about knocking you out. Sometimes the boxer just wants to wear you down. They keep hitting you enough. They give you enough punches in your stomach. You're going to say, you know what? Okay, I'm good. But that's why the devil wants some of us to backslide. He's going to keep wearing on us, Sister Stacy. He just want to keep wearing on you till you say, you know what? I can't take it. He ain't going to knock you out, but he just want to wear you down till you say, I, I, I quit. I give up. Pastor Hodges is always talking about, uh, I think it was Roberto Duran. Uh, that, that got into a situation where, um, yeah, it was. Roberto Duran, he was facing Sugar Ray Leonard. He got into a fight, and at the end of the fight, pretty much, he got whooped on so much, he said, no mas, no mas, no mas, which means no more in Spanish. He was done. He, the, he, the devil didn't, I mean, his opponent, Sugar Ray Leonard, didn't knock him out, but he wore him down. He kept battering him. He kept beating on him. This, I got this test. I turn here, I got this test. I turn here, I got another test. I turn here, I got another situation. I can't take too much more of this. I can't take too much more of this. Think about what Job went through. Job was dealing with his situation. He lost his children. He lost his, his, his livestock. He, he, he lost, it was thing after thing after thing. People kept coming. While one was coming, telling him one thing, here comes somebody else. That was supposed to make Job say, I can't take this no more. I can't take this no more. I quit. I'm out. I can't do this. His wife even told him, you ought to just curse God and die. Just get it over with. Get it over with. I can't take this anymore. Okay? So... Punches represent the hard blows that we take in life. The circumstances that are meant to break us. We could lose our job, death of a loved one, sickness in the body, wayward children, divorce, failures, car accidents, scandals, courtships that don't work out, disappointment, hurt, loneliness. All of these things are meant to make you give up on God. All of them. At the end of the day, that's the devil's point. He's in the ring to make you give up on God, whether it's because you lay down or whether it's because you say, no mas. Either way it goes, he is to make you give up on God, okay? It is not, it's easy to serve God. I'm sorry, I skipped the scripture. Proverbs, I'm just going to read this. Proverbs 24 and 10, it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, if you faint when your circumstances come up on you, that's not favorable. If you faint when the times are hard and the devil's trying to break you, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Another way of saying it is your faith is small. When I got in my hardest test, when the devil's really beating up against me, Sister Kenyatta, then I say, well, I can't do this no more. I can't do I'm out of here. This ain't, God can't come through. Because that's what that's saying. You don't believe God can come through and bless you like he has before. You don't believe God is who he says he is. You're saying you don't believe that God is the same God that worked all these situations out for generations upon generations upon generations of saved folks that love him. That's what you're saying when you say, I can't trust God in this matter. I got to bag up. I got to take my sign down. I got to give up. You are saying you don't have the faith in God that you should. So it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Okay? It's easy to serve God when he has a blessing and times are good. It's easy to praise God when everything is going your way. But what about when things aren't going your way? What do you do then? 
It's a fact we all will go through some hard times and adversity. The question is, how will you bounce back? When you get hit, what are you going to do? How will you respond? When the devil is attacking your life, what are you going to do? Okay, now this is where we can go to the scripture. Let's look at the Bible, uh, Daniel 3rd chapter. If you could pick it up at the 14th verse, and I'm just going to lay the scene for you. So here it is, Daniel, uh, I'm sorry, here it is, King Nebuchadnezzar has the three Hebrew boys. You all ought to be familiar with this story. And there was a, a rule or a decree that was given uh, pretty much that when the people hear the music, so to say, playing, they're supposed to bow down and worship the idols that the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Okay, But the three, three Hebrew boys were serving God. They weren't going for that. They say, regardless of what you're talking about, we're going to keep serving God. But the thing was, by them breaking the law, this meant death. And they were willing to risk their life because God was ser serving God was that important to them. Okay, so here we are, Daniel 3, starting at the 14th verse. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have got, which I have set up? Now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the, of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and the dulcimer, uh, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour. We ain't going to delay it. We're not going to wait. We're not going to put it off. That same hour that you don't obey this command that I'm making, you are going to be thrown into the fire. You're going to be thrown into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now, look at that. Number one, right then and there, this is a threat. If you've ever seen a boxing match or something like that, boxers have different opportunities. One, when they do a little press junket where they stand off in each other's face and they give mean looks and they, you know, looking intimidating. But then also when they're in the ring, when the referee has them come and they touch gloves, they say little stuff to each other. Man, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna knock you out, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, watch, watch, watch. They're sending threats. This was a threat that was being sent to the people of God. This was a threat that was being made on their life and the threat that hung over them was, y'all gonna die if you don't do what I tell you to do. If y'all don't bow down, you're going to die. So their life was on the line, okay? Now, this is how they defended themselves. Because when a punch is being thrown, you block. This is how they blocked. Picking up at the 16th verse. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. In other words, I ain't even got to think about this. I ain't got to come up with no long answer to give you. I can tell you dead off what it is, okay? He says, if, and they said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. They already had their confidence. This was their defense. Their defense was standing behind God. Here they were, here is God. Their defense, standing behind God. That's how they blocked that punch. That's how they took that blow. That's how they managed to maintain. They got behind God. They didn't try to step out and be tough themselves. Well, I can't handle this. No, you can't. You ain't no match for the devil, but God is. God is more than a match for the devil. Verse 17, he says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So now they talking tough. So if you're familiar with Muhammad Ali, he's known for talking stuff, talking smack as it were. They was boasting in God. They talking tough in God. They say, look. I ain't even worried about what you're talking about because our God is able to deliver us out of this test, out of this situation, out of this divorce, out of this job loss, out of this situation where my car been stolen, out of this, this situation where my child is on drugs, out of this abusive relationship. My God can deliver me out of this stuff. I don't care what you're talking about, but God's going to get me up out of this, okay? And then they took it a step further. They went both ways they with it. They said, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So even if God don't get us out of this situation, we still not going to bow down to you. We still not going to bow down to the devil. We still not going to say no mas. We still not going to give up. We're still not going to back up. We are going to keep pressing. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep believing. But if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down swinging. Okay? All right, so... Just to throw this in, Psalms, you don't have to turn there, but Psalms 28 and 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. What I just say? It ain't me fighting. I get behind him. The Lord is the strength of my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. He helps us. Brother Elston, he sees your situation. He helps you. Brother Kenya, he sees your situation. He helps you when you need it. He sees your situation, Brother Willie. He helps you when you need it. He says, 
He says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, okay, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. So this is why we praise God. We praise God, Sister Joyce, because he's faithful. We praise God because he's helped us in, in hard times. Uh, Mother, he's been there for you time and time again. This ain't something that we just, well, I don't know really. Somebody asked you, well, why do you serve God? I, you know, I kind of don't know. Yes, you do. You got a laundry list of things you can tell him that he's done for you in your life. Let me, hold on, how much time you got? How much time you got? Let me tell you, okay? So let's, I'm going to fast forward the story. So the king got so mad, he ordered the folks to, take the, to make the fiery furnace seven times hotter than what it normally would be. He told the men to throw the Hebrew boys in the fire. They tied the Hebrews, he, Hebrew boys up, put all of their stuff in there. We talking about their hats, their coats, their socks, their clothes, they, everything. He said, burn it all. Put them all, tie them up and put it all in there with them. The furnace was so hot that the men who tried to put the Hebrew boys in there, they died from the flames and the heat. That's how hot it was, okay? So the Hebrew boys were thrown into the burning, uh, blazing hot furnace, bound from head to toe. Now we're going to pick it up at the 24th verse, okay? So at the 24th verse, uh, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. He rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did not we cast three bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. So here go the thing. Here we go now. This is them taking the punch. This is them standing behind God. This is them uh, having faith in the word that they know. Okay? Uh, he answered and said, Lo, I see four loose, four not bound, loose, four of them loose walking in the midst of the fire. This test that you're in, this test that they were in, they ain't bound by it. It's not, whole, they walking around in there. He can't hold me. He can't stop me. He can't keep me from doing what I'm supposed to do. He can't stop God. He can't prevent God from being God. He said they were walking around loose in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. They have no hurt, Brother Elston. They ain't even bothered by the situation they're in. This devil, he thought he was doing something. He thought he was doing something, but we taking it. We taking it because of God. He said they're not even hurt, okay? Uh, da, 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 lost my place. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So wait a minute. We put three people in there, but it's four in there? Sister Stacy, is somebody in there with them? Is somebody in there with them? Got them free. Got them unharmed. Got them safe. Got them pressing through their situation. Okay, okay. so uh, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, I'm sorry, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Now he want to talk about the servants of the Most High God. Now he was just telling them they was going to die if they didn't bow down and worship the, the, the God that he set up uh, when the music played. But now he say, look, ye servants, he had to recognize. He had to recognize who God was. Thou servants of the Most High God, come forth. Come up out that situation. Come up out that situation. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. Uh, you don't have to turn there, but Psalms 27 and 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When I step in the ring, who am I going to be afraid of? Who's going to knock me out? I got God on my side. Who's going to put me down, Sister Dorothy? Who can beat God? Who is greater than him, Sister? Nobody's greater than him. Okay, so whom shall I fear? What situation am I going to worry about? Is loneliness going to make me worry about him? Is death of a loved one going to make me worry about him? Is uh, losing my job going to make me worry about him? If they take my house, if they take my car, is that going to make me worry about him? None of those opponents are stronger than God. None of them can beat God. None of them are better than him. This brother talked about cigarettes. The other brother talked about addiction and drugs, uh, uh, alcohol. None of that stuff is stronger than God. Okay, so let's keep going. We can move down to Daniel uh, 6 and 7. I'm going to try to get this quickly. I know my time is going. So here goes the threat again. We're talking about Daniel himself. Daniel was a government man, okay? Uh, Daniel worked in government. Uh, this is a situation where Daniel had some haters. He had some people on his job, Sister Stacy, that didn't like him. And they was trying to get him up out of there because Daniel worshipped God. He wasn't, he wasn't ashamed to worship God. He wasn't afraid to worship God openly. Okay, so these haters, what they tried to do is come up with a law, Sister Dorothy, and they came to the king to try to trick the king. They say, king, look, uh, we're going to put this decree in place where basically for 30 days, nobody can petition God except you. You're the only one that could do it. But for 30 days, no one can petition God. But if they did, they ought to be put to death, Okay. So picking up at the seventh verse, it says, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute. So these are the haters getting together. And to make a firm decree that whosoever shall make a petition 
ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save the king, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the lion den. Okay, now, O king, establish this decree, sign the writing that it not be changed according to the law of the Medes, the Persians, and which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing. So the king went along with it. He didn't know no better. He just, okay, that sounded like a good law to him. Okay, cool. This sounds makes sense. Nobody should uh, go before God if, except it's just me or, uh, you know, within 30 days. It made sense to him. Okay, so this is the threat. Okay, now here goes them standing behind God. Here goes the defense. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel knew about the law. Daniel heard what they was trying to do, but he said, I'm not going to change how, my, how I deal with my God. This is not going to change my relationship with God. I don't care if I do lose my keys a hundred times a day. It's not going to make me stop believing in God. I don't care what, what my, my wayward children are doing. It's not going to make me change how I feel about God. I don't care if my spouse walk out on me. I don't want her to walk out on me. But if my spouse walk out on me, it's not going to make me change how I feel about God. I don't care if I go outside and have a car accident, tear my new car up, which I love. That's not going to make me change how I feel about God. There should be no situation that'll make you back up. I could be sick of my body, racked with pain, but Lord, I still trust you. And Lord, I don't want it to make me back up on you. I want to stay faithful with you. I want to stay strong with you. So this was Daniel's attitude. Daniel said, I don't care what law they're talking about. I'm going to keep praying before God. Matter of fact, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to open my windows. He, Daniel was bold with it. He in the ring bouncing like, what? What? I'm going to open my windows and let them know I'm praying three times a day. They ain't shutting down nothing, okay? Verse 11, it says, Then these men assembled and found Daniel and praying and making uh, supplication before God. Uh, just to fast forward the story. So the haters went, as I told you. They went and told the king. So now they're tricking. They then went to the king and they told him, Look, hey, you done signed this decree, this law. You done put it out there and you can't go back on it. But we done saw Daniel breaking the law. And now the king, you got to do something. You got to stick to the script and honor your word with what you said and have this man killed. The king didn't want to do it. The king loved Daniel. He favored Daniel. He didn't want to do it. And he realized, oh, my God, I got to put this man to death. He didn't want to do it, but he was bound by his word. He had to keep the law which he signed and put in effect. So the king had to go through the motion. He had to have Daniel uh, arrested and basically put into the lion's den. We're going to pick it up at the 18th verse. Then the king went to his palace. and pay. So now he had, he had Daniel put in the lion's den. So here he is. Now the king himself, he's worried. He's stressed out because he loved Daniel, Sister Dorothy. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. He fasting. He fasting for Daniel. <laughs> he, look, this man is fasting for Daniel. Neither he didn't want to hear no music. It says neither were instruments brought before him, and his sleep went out before went out from him. He didn't get no sleep. He didn't want to hear no music. He probably didn't want to eat. He was sick to his stomach because he's worried about Daniel. Okay. Then the king arose the very early in the morning and went with haste to the lion's den. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto uh, voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, "O Daniel, serve." of the living God. Now he recognized, he recognized as well whom Daniel serves. He said, oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, not a dead God, not a wooden God, not an idol, not no chain, not no, not no metal, a living God, a real God, a present help in the time of need, okay? He said, thou servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou serve continually able to deliver thee from the lion's den? Can God get you out of that situation, Sister Dorothy? It looked bad. It looked bad. Brother say, hey, I, I, I'm diagnosed with cancer. It looked bad. It looked bad. I don't know what they're going to do. Can God get you out of that? Let's see what he say. This is, the, this is him taking a punch. This is him. He says, then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. He stopped that situation. He put that cancer in remission. He gave you a new job. He gave you a new spouse. He took away your loneliness. He gave you a beautiful home. He gave you a healthy child. He did all so he shut that lion's mouth, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my spot. He shut the lion's mouth, and they have not hurt me. They have not hurt me, Sister Sylvia. They haven't done anything to me. They can't harm me. They can't mess with me. He bouncing. They can't mess with me. He can't fade me. The devil can't take me out. He cannot mess with me as long as I'm behind God. 
I want to stress that as long as I'm behind God, he can't, he can't do anything with me. Okay, verse 23. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Who do you believe in? Who do you believe in? Who do you trust? When the devil's throwing them blows, when he's trying to put you down, who do you believe in? Who do you stand behind? Who are you holding on to? When them circumstances are coming, you go, oh, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to deal with another thing, not another issue, not another. How are you going to deal with this? Who do you believe in? Who do you stand behind? Okay, I'm going to go real quick. I'm at the end, and i got a few minutes left. In both of those scenarios in the Bible, what we covered uh, today, the devil aimed to hit the person so hard that they changed their stance. He meant to hit the three Hebrew boys so hard that they bag up on God. Okay, okay, I hear you. We're going to bow down. We don't want to get put in the fire. We're going to... He did the same thing with Daniel. He was trying to hit Daniel so hard that Daniel said, you know what, I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to let them see me. I'm just going to stop because I don't want to be put in the lion's den. Okay. He was trying to hit them so hard that they would change their stance, that they would back up on God, that they would throw in the towel and just say, look, I'm laying down and I'm giving up. We can't do that, saints. We can't do that, saints. But also in both scenarios, the people were able to withstand the devil's blows by standing behind God. Not them taking it themselves, not me trying to fix my own problem, Brother Willie, not me saying I can handle this. I know I got an addiction, Brother Kermit, but I can do this myself. I don't need God. I'm a fool. I need to get right here. I need to get right here. Okay? You don't have to turn here, but just keep these scriptures in mind. Deuteronomy 20 and 4, it says, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. You may feel like you're by yourself or think you're by yourself, but the devil will tell you that, but you're not by yourself, mother. You're not by yourself. It's he that goeth with you to fight. What are you doing? To fight for you, okay? To fight for you against the enemies. You, I told you you had an opponent. You got an adversary. We read that already. He goes to fight for you against your enemies. Isaiah 40 and 29, if you just want to mark it, uh, he says, he giveth power to the faint. Oh, these blows are hurting me. These things are hurting me. I'm tired. He's wearing me down, Lord. He's wearing me down. He's wearing me down. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. He'll strengthen you, Sister Kenyatta. He'll give you something. When you're feeling weak, he'll give you something. When you feel like, uh, uh, Sister Nicole, I can't go no further. I can't go another step. I can't take another problem. I can't take another situation, Sister Savannah. I can't take not one more loss. I can't. God will give you strength. Come on, daughter. Come on, you can make it. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Okay? Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear thou not. For I am with thee. This is God telling you this, Sister Joyce. He said, fear thou not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I'm your God. I'm your God. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help you, Brother Nick. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Okay? He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to leave you alone, Brother James. He know what you're going through. He know your circumstance. He know your situation. But God is in your corner. He's in your corner. Come on, you can do this, son. You can do this, daughter. Okay? Uh, last scripture, Romans 8, 37, if you just mark it down. It says, nay, in all these things, in all these situations, in all this stuff the devil is throwing at you, we are more than conquerors through him. Through him, through him, not me, but me getting behind God, through him, okay, that loved us. This is why God does this, because he loves us, mother. He cares about you. Look, brother, he cares about your circumstance. He cares about your children. He cares about your family, your job. He cares about your loved ones. He cares about that uncle that's on drugs that won't get off. He cares about that, that, that child that just, is, just don't want to come to God. No better, but just don't want to come to God. He cares about that person. He cares about that nephew. He cares about all them circumstances. He cares about that nephew that's in and out of jail. He cares about that person. Nobody is lost when it comes to God, but what he wants you to do is stand behind him. Stand behind him. Let him fight your battles, okay? The point of my message, two minutes, the point of my message is this. You say, Brother Sean, what you talking about? What I'm trying to tell you is the, the, the devil is going to try you. He's going to. That's a fact, okay? What does that mean? What does it mean? Expect a punch. Expect a punch. Don't think it's going to be sunshine around. I'm just trying to tell you this to prepare you. I'm not trying to lie to you or make it up and make it seem like it's all sunshine. And no, you're going to get some hits sometimes. But, but. But you can still make it, okay? How do you defend yourself against the devil's blows? Stand behind God. Stay right here. Just, just stand behind God. Lord, you got it. You got it. You got it, okay? 
Exodus uh, 14, 14, just mark it down. I'm sorry, this is my last scripture. It says, the Lord shall fight for you. Again, the Lord will fight for you. You don't, you don't have to lift a muscle. You don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to do a thing. The Lord will fight for you. When situations come your way, please, y'all, remember this. The Lord will fight for you, okay? Can you take a punch? Can you take a punch? That is all I have, saints. Thank you for your, your, your energy, your participation. Thank you for listening. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be able to share with you. Um, this is the Church of God of Joliet, 1801 Maple Road, um, where Pastor Elder Eddie Hodges Jr. is our pastor. Um, for those out there in social media, uh, Facebook Live, uh, YouTube, um, if you have an opportunity and you wish to come join with us, uh, come worship with us, please, please. We're, we have Bible studies on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. We have uh, Sunday morning worship here at 11 on Sundays. We'd love to have you. Please be our guest. And uh, if you have any questions, anything like that, you can reach out to our Facebook page. Um, I believe there's a, a way you can message or either contact the church directly. Uh, we would love to just have you. So we appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. God bless you.